egret. Yep, that's the second largest bird we have out here in the Everglades. Those birds on average stand anywhere from two and a half to three and a half feet tall, but their wingspan can get up to five foot six inches. That was a juvenile, that wasn't a very big one. They get much bigger than that. But a full, a full grown, mature egret, one of their favorite meals is baby alligators, little hatchlings. Really? Mm -hmm. When baby alligators hatch, they're only about two and a half, three inches long. They're very vulnerable to any birds of prey out here. So that's about an eight or nine foot alligator. A quick way to judge the, the length of an alligator is the distance from the tip of their eye sockets to the tip of their nostrils. However many inches that is, that's about how long they are in feet. So if it's about six or seven inches, he's about six or seven feet long. Eight or nine, eight or nine feet long, so on and so forth. Is there a season for baby alligators? Or um, yeah, typically it's, it's in August. August and September is when the babies start to hatch. The mating season typically is in April. And they're not endangered anymore? Right? No. No, as of 1998, they reopened alligator hunting in South Florida. Right. Um, and it's regulated. It is, there's, there's a lot of rules and regulations you have to apply. It's a lottery system. You can okay. apply, but you're not guaranteed to, to receive the tags. Yeah. And if you do get drawn, if your name is drawn, they'll issue you two tags and you're only allowed two alligators. You guys see that? Yeah. 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 Just imagine the other guy. Wow. That all that also could have happened when he was a lot smaller. Guys, on average an alligator will grow about a foot each year until they reach six feet. Beyond that they'll only grow about an inch each year. So if you ever see a, a 12 or 13 foot alligator, he's he's north of 80 years old. Wow. There's some fish or something. Yeah, what are the fish jumping? Yep. Are they? That could be a number of different types of fish. It could be gar fish, it could be mud fish, or it could be um, armored catfish. Okay. You know what? I think he might have his whole tail. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's got his tail. I just I guess I couldn't see the other part of it.
Uh, typically, it's it's mainly fish and turtles. It's the oh. easiest meal that they can get. Okay. Um, every so often, it's it's every once in a while a, a duck or, or a heron. Oh, okay. Herons are a lot easier to knock out in nests. Uh, typically, alligators are looking for the easiest meal they can get. They only have an energy span of about 30 seconds. Beyond that, they're worn out. Okay. Kind of like me. I like that too. <laughs> Now, how about the hunters that come out to the hunting lodges? They uh... they're they're really not doing any much 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 of, of hunting anymore. They're ma mainly hunting for beer. You know yeah, what I mean? Okay. Coming out here just to have a good time and yeah. play some cards or whatever. Yep. So you guys see those scales on the alligator's back? Mm -hmm. Those are called scoots. Underneath all that skin, it's solid bone. It's two purpose. It acts as its main purpose is to act as the alligator's solar panel. Like I was saying before, they are cold-blooded reptiles. Those scales, those scoots, are actually, as, as long as his back is exposed to sunlight, he's gaining energy. So during this time of year, they'll crawl up onto the banks like this and catch as much sunlight. If he's not interrupted, if he's not bothered, he'll stay in that spot all day, charging himself up. That way at nighttime when the temperature drops, he can stay in the water and stay moving. It also acts as an armored plating on the alligator's back, like a shield. Almost makes the alligator bulletproof. What, uh, what, what most cold-blooded reptiles do in this time of year, even though it doesn't feel that cold to us, this is freezing for them. So they actually slow their heart rate down to about one or two beats a minute. So that's why they don't move so much when we get when we get up close to them, they're not pumping enough blood to their brain to react quickly. So they're, they're pretty sluggish this time of year. Also, during the cold weather, alligators really don't eat anything. If they eat something, it's small, like a fish or two maybe. But the reason I say that is, like I said, they do slow their heart rate down. All of their inter internal organs also slow down. So when they eat something and won't digest properly, they could get sick. So they'll go, they could go up to four months without having a meal. Wow. You guys know the difference between crocs and alligators? Uh, is there snout, snout? Right, There's snout, yep. Yeah. The, the snout on an alligator is a lot wider, much shorter. Croc snout, also you can see all of their teeth when their, yeah. their mouth is shut. Whereas this alligator, you can only see the top layer of teeth. Crocs is a really bad overbite, so you can see both sets of teeth when their mouth is shut. There are also crocs here too. Or we just, do. Okay. We do have crocs in South Florida in the Everglades, but not this far inland. This is all fresh water. Excuse me. Crocs typically like to stay in in salt water or brackish water, and that's actually where you'll find alligators and crocodiles both is in brackish water. Hmm. But if you were to find an alligator in any type of uh, of real salt water like in the bay side or in the gulf side he won't survive anything more than than three or four days alligators don't have a gland to process salt so i stopped here to show you guys why it's not a very good idea to stick your hand out of the boat when we're moving this stuff here is called sawgrass as far as the eye can see it's called sawgrass and if you grab it here at the bottom it can't cut you and if you run your fingers up this way it can't cut you but if you go back down like this against the grain, it can't. It'll grab your skin. There's, there's thousands of little teeth on there. And every single one of these teeth are called glades, which is how we got the name Everglades, because the sawgrass goes oh, on gosh, forever. The and the closer you get to the top, the sharper the glades get. It acts as a self-defense mechanism for the plant. Anything out here in the plant life that's high in protein will naturally develop a thorn or a sticker to prevent animals from eating it all the way to the ground. So there's actually only one animal that eats this stuff out here, and that's the deer. White-tailed deer will eat this stuff. They'll pull it up just like I did, and they'll eat the white piece at the bottom. So they actually come out into the mm -hmm. water? Yep. This area in particular, we have we don't have as many deer as we used to due to, to high water levels. Most of the deer that were over here on this side either died off or they moved over to that side of 75. There's a lot more solid ground for them to sleep on and they still will get out into the water and, and graze and stuff like that.
But this side over here, I haven't seen a deer in probably about six years. So they don't get hoof rod or anything? No. That's crazy, mm -hmm. right? But you, typically you think of a deer yeah. and you think that their, their hooves are hard. Yeah. Uh, a South Florida whitetail, or at least in the Everglades, they're, they're soft like a paw, like a dog's really? paw. Yep. Yep. Are they like the key deer? Or they're the they're very similar to a key deer. Very okay. similar. They're a little bit bigger. They're uh, the only only difference. They're about the same size and, and body. Key deer's legs are a little bit shorter. Uh -huh. The a white tail out here probably has the same height as a regular white tail anywhere else, but it's just very very skinny. There's no uh -huh. fat on them at all. Yeah. They're burning they're burning fat constantly. They're always walking through water. And they can actually outrun an airboat for sure through all this water. Wow. done it to me before <laughs> Wow, guys believe it or not the Everglades is not a marsh it's not a swamp it's actually considered a river it's the slowest moving river on the planet that's how we got the nickname river of grass but all of this water has a constant natural flow to it all from from the Everglades all the way to Lake Okeechobee and the Kissimmee chain of lakes it's all one waterway that flows south into the Gulf Stream so technically the Everglades is the slowest and the widest river on the planet. So the source is Lake Okeechobee? Lake Okeechobee, yep.